Hello everybody, this is Dark Trout, your fishy friend, and it's time for some more Pokemon Showdown. Last time we did a little guide to NU team, team building, and it seemed, judging by the viewer count, that that was pretty popular, so I'm going to try doing another video similar to that. This time we're going to do a different style of team. Last time we had a more rounded kind of team. But now we're going to try going for all out offense and try to ignore bulk for the most part. Oh, hold on. Let's... We're going to stay in NU. We'll go to rare, the rarely used tier maybe next time. But let's let's finish off in RU, er, NU and then we'll go up. So since we're doing a more offensive team, we do still want hazards up as hazards are just good in general. If you notice, I have the chat kind of closed, and I'm currently not liking the look of it. So we're gonna, you know, what, even when I'm not, we're not using it. I like the look of it better, so we're gonna keep that there. I know it seems cluttered, but it's better than that spot being empty. So we're gonna look through, and already we're gonna need someone who can set our hazards, or at least just a stealth rock setter. Stealth Rocks on its own will break all sashes. It'll take out a lot of Pokemon who are weak to rock. Well, not take out, but weaken those Pokemon. And I already see Crustle can do a very good job at this because he's got Sturdy and he's just all around decent. And he has some semblance of offensive stylings with Shell Smash. Although we're not going to be using that. So we're going to give him Stealth Rock and Spikes. Uh, we're going to give him X Scissor for a nice stab attack and Rock Blast. What Rock Blast will help us do is if someone's lead is sashed, we'll be able to break the sash and then hit them. In the case of Ninjask, who likes to set up substitutes, we can break the substitute and then break the Ninjask. We'll order this nicely in side. X Scissor. And in terms of spread we'll put we'll invest in attack and we'll invest in plenty of speed so we can outspeed other hazard setters okay now that we got our hazards up we don't necessarily need to keep them on the field unless so well what I mean is we don't necessarily need a rapid spinner because that means we'll have another Pokemon who We'll be doing too much support and not enough offense. So let's throw in another offender. Someone, obviously someone who's fast. Archaeops, since we're not bringing a rapid spinner of any kind, might uh, fail us. I think a good... Oh, Electivire was recently put into NU. So we'll put Electivire in. A Life Orb. Motor drive, so our electric attacks will instead boost his speed and not even hurt him. We'll give him wild charge. We'll give him fire punch, ice punch, oops, ice punch. And we'll, for the last move, we're going to take a quick look and decide whether or not we want fighting type coverage or we want ground type coverage. We might change this later depending on how our team looks, but I think. Since we're going to be switching in on electric type attacks, we're going to want Earthquake. So the standard spread, since we're going to be boosting our speed through motor drive, it's generally a good idea to go for more power. Electivire already sits at a nice speed, even though as Jolly he won't be able to outspeed Jolly Sock, who we might actually put on our team. But let's hop in, we're going to want another good strong attacker. Ariados would be good for setting up Sticky Web to slow down our opponents, which is something to consider. Who has some merit as a suicide lead, too. Oh, I already need my liquid refreshment. Alright. Now, let's see. We want a good choice banded user for immediate power and wall breaking. Forte. Hmm. Sock 
can actually do this job with his high attack and mold breaker so he can actually prevent hazards from going on the field. So we'll put close combat for good strong obliterating power. Earthquake with mold breaker means that if we see a wheezing and we predict, predict it to switch in, Earthquake will ignore wheezing's levitate and kill it. Uh, Stone Edge to take out flyers. Ice Punch to do a similar job. Oh wait, no. We'll do Knock Off and use Ice Punch for our flyers because Stone Edge has shaky accuracy. Plus Stone Edge can, er, Ice Punch can hit Altaria even harder. And Altaria seems relatively common. And we're going to go Jolly on this sock. Actually, you know what? We might miss some KOs by not going with Adamant for the power, so we're going to stick with Adamant. Now we might want another good offensive pivot and Arbok can actually do that job for us so we'll throw Arbok in. Intimidate is what gives, us, gives him his ability to switch in very easily. So we can switch on, switch in on the fighting types of the tier, switch in on their close combats, weaken them, take the hit and then start setting up coiled boosts for attack defense and accuracy. And because we're increasing our accuracy, Gunk Shot is a very good move since Arbok has relatively low power so having the high base power of gunk shot will help a lot earthquake will help us hit steel types and poison types and sucker punch gives us very very nice priority and for the spread we will although i usually like running speed on arbok since this arbok will be taking a lot of hits we might want to go for bulky which is why it said it's suggesting that but we're going to go with max attack max speed so that gives this Arbok a chance at sweeping which is what this team is more designed to do. Now in the case of a stall team that might give us a lot of problems because they'll be trying to throw hat no not hazards well they might be throwing hazards at us but they'll be throwing hazards at us they'll be trying to status us so Zatu who's been dropped to NU this generation I'll there we go will be a very helpful Pokemon since it's got decent speed. We can set up call we can use it to set up call mines, bounce back hazards and statuses, and apply a little bit of mind gaming, and it's a special attacker, which we don't have yet, so and it has some synergy with Electivire since Electivire will be getting boosted off of the attacks that Zatu's gonna be taking, like electric attacks. And just the fact that we have Electivire here means that people will be thinking twice about putting, well, about trying to kill Zatu with an electric attack. So we might be able to outpredict some people there. So we'll give him Dazzling Gleam, or Shadow Ball, and then Dazzling Gleam to defeat Dark Types. Fast Special Sweeper, I can agree with this. And now we want someone who's a scarf user to outspeed a lot of the faster threats so we could go with barbarical he's okay with a scarf especially since most people expect the usual shell smash shenanigans hmm a good scarfer sock makes for a good scarfer but he's already banded so we can't use him a choice specs electrode could work too and Electro would be able to deal with Chatots very easily since it completely ignores Boom Burst and Chatter, which is what most um, Chatots will run. So, you know what? We'll go with Choice Specs Electrode. Choice Specs Soundproof. That gives him his immunity to Boom Burst and Chatter and things like that. So, we'll go for Hidden Power Grass since we have Sock running the. Um, ice Punch. Although now that I think about it, having Electivire and Electrode might be a poor idea, especially considering how many ground weaknesses. So taking that into mind, we're going to uh, try and looking for another special attacker. Gorbis wouldn't be too bad. Mm. Jinx isn't really a defensive Pokemon. It's got like almost non-existent physical defense. Uh, Lapras would be a would be a good bulky 
is bulky enough so we can switch into it for attacks and it's a special attacker and it's if we can use it as an all-out attacker with an assault vest so mag mortar could work pretty well or we can roll with actually you know what? we'll go with mag mortar we'll do a choice scarf mag mortar with vital spirit which means it can't be put to sleep give him fire blast Focus Blast, uh, Thunderbolt, uh, what else do we have here? I do not actually particularly use Magmortar very often. It's only this generation where Magmortar was moved into NU. So we'll round off the set with Psychic to hit things like Girder without having to worry on Fire Blast accuracy. And in fact, I'm pretty sure a super effective Psychic is actually stronger than a Stab Fire Blast. In which, yes, it is definitely so dark trouts, hyper offense, and you. And of course, throughout the video, we can make changes and everything, but we made this team quite a bit faster. And hyper offense is at the same, it's harder and easier to make at the same time because you have to cover a lot of threats and have a very simultaneously well-rounded yet offensive team because that's what a hyper offensive team is so let's go back to the home hit our NU button hit hyper offense and look for a battle oh wow we already found one alright so let's see what we got here Pyroar, Seismitoad, Mismagius, Armaldo, Rotom Fan and Leopard or Leopard or whatever. Alright, so Seismitoad is very likely to be trying to set up hazards, but we have Zatu to help us with that. So we're going to just start up, lead off with our stun blocks. Seismitoad is going to try leading off. We're going to switch right into our Zatu. He might predict this because this is a pretty obvious move. Well, one of the first things we want to do in this match is try to figure out how our opponent plays. Okay, so he predicted that. In hindsight, we should give our Zatu Giga Drain after this, so that just so it can take down Seismitoads, Seismitoads easily. Although it did decent damage with that too. It's gonna survive unless it get burned, and it's. I have. A, he's probably gonna switch into his Leopard, so I'm gonna go for the Dazzling Gleam. Psychic will not KO him, so this is a fairly safe move. Wait for him to make a move. <coughs> exactly. We just got a free kill. Oh, and we won! <laughs> Sometimes making tricky plays like that can help you a lot. So, as I said before, I want to be able to defeat uh, Seismitoad since he is a fairly... Well, yeah, fairly common lead, so giving giving our Zatu Giga Drain will help a lot with that. It also deals with rock types, who are also usually leads. Alright, so we got another Seismitoad and a Wigglytuff. Ooh. So we're going to lead off with our Zatu again. He might be leading off with our his Regirock. So you know what, we're going to try leading with Sock in, on the chance he's leading with Regirock and nothing on his team seems to particularly want to take a choice banded close combat from an adamant Sock. So even if, unless he sends an Archaeops, we're fine. But Archaeops usually isn't much of a lead. See, Regirock is here. So you can't really switch in. Even since and since even though Wigglytuff is fairy, it's still half normal, so we're gonna hit this thing nice and hard. Although it, Regirock has extremely high defense, he's gonna lose his Archaeops right here. Archaeops has terrible defenses and he's part rock, so he's not gonna survive that. Even if we were only Scarf. <laughs> We're going to go into our Zatu now. He predicted that. He burned us. We have something just for this Seismitoad. Got him. 
free seismitoad kill. He's probably going to send in Mighty Anna or Shift Tree. Oh, Reggie Rock comes back out. I'm going to Giga Drain it. He can't set up his rocks because we have Magic Bounce. Okay, he's just going to attack us. He's going to kill off our Zatu. And we're going to hit something else with Choice Bandit Close Combat. Sock highly threatens this guy's team. And it is a pretty bad idea to have a team like this that's this threatened by something like this. And he realizes that Sock is going to give him a highly problematic game, so he just forfeits. Okay, so we have... Oh, great. We have a Ditto. Ditto's a hard Pokemon to play around, just because a Ditto on the field means it's going to be harder for us to set up just because we have to deal with, well, our own poke, one of our own Pokemon. So we're going to lead off with Pressel. I can only. I'm gonna now. I'm gonna go into Zatu. He probably doesn't expect us to send a flying type out a rock type, so he's probably trying to get his hazards up. He went for the spikes most likely because he doesn't have his own spike setter. So we're gonna go straight for the psychic. If he's choice scarfed, he'll leave right now. So he's very likely choice scarfed, and he just lost his Motham, who's a fair. Oh, and he leaves. We're getting pretty far up just based off these forfeits, so let's find another one. Alright. So we've got Shelgon, Miltank, Luminion, Lantern, Granbull, and Excelgor. So we're going to lead off with Crustle again, because this is a fairly bulky team. So. We're going to see how Crustle feels like. Helping. So we've got Lantern. Uh, we don't particularly need Crustle for anyone except for maybe the Excel Gore, but I'm not too worried because we do have our Magmortar right here. So I'm going to just go ahead and set up my rocks. I've got Sturdy. So unless he burns me, we're fine. He's going to take his time for some reason. There's a good chance I'll be switching into Zatu soon. And see, this is why we wanted to go for a speedy version of our Crustle. That way we can outspeed defensive threats and get a free layer of whatever hazard we want. So now we want to send in someone who can take out this Lantern. Choice Banded Sock will do an extremely high amount of damage to it, so that's exactly what we're going to try to do. So we're going to go for the close combat. He's probably going to switch into Grand Bull. But we don't want to make plays like that just yet. We want to figure out our opponent. And even if he switches into Grand Bull, we can send in our Arbok to intimidate the Grand Bull and force it out. Unless it has Earthquake. In which we'll, we'll probably survive, but we'll be in an unhappy situation. Take another sip of my refreshment. Now we can get a free coil boost off. Unless he has Earthquake. Which he probably would have used if he had it. I didn't see any reason not to if he had Earthquake. So he his mill tank probably has Earthquake. He's probably going to go for the Body Slam. We're going to go straight for the Gunk Shot. It should hit this Miltank reasonably hard. It's got decent defenses, so at the very least, we might poison him, which will be very helpful. So we're just waiting for him to make a move. Let's see what the. I'm pretty sure Miltank is physically defensive. Yeah, it's got m much higher physical defense than special defense. I think he's either going to go for the Body Slam to try to paralyze us, or he's going to go for the Earthquake to just try to damage us. But either way, we have plus one defense, so we should survive anything he wants to throw at us. He's taking his time, so we're going to start the timer. Might be lagging, too. See, as I said, we're going to hit him pretty hard. I'm going to go for the Sucker Punch, expecting him to just want to get damage off because his mill tank is 
probably dead. Oh, he went for the milk drink. So we're just going to go straight for another gunk shot. He really doesn't want to keep his mill tank in for too much longer, though. Okay, so... Now we're going to go for the Sucker Punch, because if he tries to body slam us, we're dead. He's going to be cheeky and go for another milk drink. So I'm going to go for another Sucker Punch. He's going to kill off our Arbok. We're going to send in Magmortar, and we're going to hit him up with a Focus Blast. He's very likely Choice Bandit, and he's about to go for the Earthquake, so we're going to switch into Zatu. Oh, no, he went straight for the play rough. So, we're going to switch into Electivire. This should hit him pretty hard. It finishes him off. He'll probably not send in Luminion for the obvious reasons. He'll probably switch into Shell Dawn. He's probably going to try setting up sh uh, Dragon Dances now, so we're going to hit him with a nice punch. Oh, he just went for the Toxic. He might have Protect. Yep. So we're going to go for... Well, that's, I'm going to do a quick mental calculation here. Earthquake will probably kill him, so... You know what, I'm just going to go... He went for the double protect. He's being super cheeky. So we're going to go for another ice punch. Sends in his Luminion. Which is completely fine. I'm there's I have nothing against just sending in my sock and just killing this. Luminion doesn't have very high stats, so a choice banded so, like he's not taking this. Now he has to switch in his Excel Gore. <laughs> now we could probably kill this with a choice banded close combat because Excel Gore's defenses aren't very high but I'm not entirely sure if he can one shot us so I'm gonna go straight into Mag Mortar play it safe he's taking his time He's taking way too much time on this. It's not it's not hard unless all I can think of is he's gonna try going for I don't know There's not much he can do. He can go for final gambit and like weaken our sock. But we're at full health and he's not, so final gambit won't really do anything. He's probably considering he went for the double protect, he's probably just wasting our time. So, we just have to wait. He's got 60 seconds left. I might ed edit this out, but while we wait, we're going to start nicknaming our Pokemon. Occasionally checking. So, Team Builder. We're going to name our Crustle, Crustlein. Electivire can be a Electizap. 
I just realized we have the Mag Mortar Electivire combo, which is kind of nice, or kind of funny. We can name our Sock Sock, and go for our a female Arbok, name it Queen. And the guy forfeited. It's been happening quite a bit today. We might be able to end this episode early. But you know what? I think I'll do two more matches and then I'll end this video. But let's get to naming our Pokemon. We'll name our Zatu. I don't know. Zatu Batu. Or back you. Zatu back at you. Fire Mortar. If you guys got better names, just just suggest them. I'm not particularly good at naming if you haven't noticed yet. So we'll do two more matches. Okay, let's see. We got his Ooh, a stun fist. That's a pretty big threat. So we're gonna go into our Crustle in. He's probably gonna lead off with Stun Fist going for the Stealth Rocks, so we're gonna lead off with the Crustle. And if he goes for the Stealth Rocks, we're gonna go straight into Oh, alright. Alright, so he probably, he may have predicted us to lead with Crustle, and he wants to kill our Crustle, so we're just going to get our rocks up. So we're going to get dropped down to Sturdy, and get our spikes up. Oop, not X, there's our spikes. Now I'm going to switch into, yeah, I'm going to switch into Sock. <coughs> Because nothing really, oh, nothing on his team really wants to take a choice band in close combat, so. Except for maybe Stunfisk, and hopefully we do not get paralyzed. So he just, oh. That really sucks. Our sock just lost a lot of health for us because of that. He's probably going to kill it right here, so you know what? Sock was going to be extremely helpful, but... He's paralyzed right now, so he probably expected us to switch, and we got paralyzed, so we're just kind of getting getting screwed right now. So we're going to go for the Ice Punch. We're just going to keep getting paralyzed. So we just, we really couldn't do anything there. So, going to go into Arbok, Intimidate him. He's probably locked into Knock Off, because if he wasn't, then he would have done something else so we're gonna go for a free coil boost on the switch he's for some reason con continuing to go for knockoff so we're just gonna kill his dodrio Alright, so we switch into his Pyroar. Our Arbok's probably done right now, so we're going to go straight for the Sucker Punch. I'm not entirely sure if this is Specs or Scarf, but we're going to go to, our, to Fire Mortar and go straight for a Psychic, because that hits everything at least neutrally. Sent in his Wall Rain. We're going to go to Zatu. Okay, we're going to go for the Giga Drain, hit it with decent power. Ooh, he took that really well. So we're going to lose our... He's probably Assault Vested, that's probably why he took that so well. So we're going to go into Electivire. He probably he probably has thick fat, so we're not gonna go for we're just gonna go for the wild charge. He'll switch into Carnivine, that's fine. Carnivine isn't particularly strong, so we'll be fine. Now hold on, I I, I don't know what Carnivine learns, so we're gonna do s slash learn Carnivine Earthquake. Carnivine does not learn Earthquake, so we can switch into Magmortar probably pretty fine. He's gonna go for the Leech Seed. I'm going to go for the Fire Blast. I 
I don't, I'm not entirely sure what this sock is, so we're going to go for the fire, oh, that sucks. That's really, yeah, we're, we're pretty much screwed because of that. We should have sacked Electivire, just gone into, yeah, pretty much just sacked Electivire and then, well, what can you do? We missed. It's bound to happen every episode, right? Alright, so now what do we got here? We got another mill tank. The primate's either scarfed or ba banded, but he has a Rapidash and that's probably banded. Not sure what Gogo -Go wants to do. Glaceon might be Specs. You know what? I want my hazards up. He's got Rapidash out. Let's see what he wants to do. I don't even know how he missed that. Oh, apparently Drill Run can miss. I didn't realize that. Although Drill Run was not a smart move for him to do. We're, we're part bug, so we resist that. Crustle has a pretty good defense stat, so it's not going to do much. He might just... Oh, okay. So we're going to claim victory. I'm going to go into another match. Alright, so we got Typhlosion for Alligator. I'm pretty sure that Vivillon is going to be the usual Sleep Powder and lead with Focus Sash. We're going to lead into Crustle, in which we're going to change our Crustle next time. Because we're going to give it Weather Goggles, which is a new, or is it called Weather Goggles or is it called Safety Goggles? I'm pretty sure it's called Safety. We're going to check this one. He's, he's pretty much stuck. He's... We're going to go with for the Stealth Rocks just to kind of cripple that Vivalon. Okay, that's going to hit hard because Typhlosion is a very hard hitter. That might be Specs, but I'm not entirely sure. So we're going to lose Crustle, which is fine. We're going to go Magmortar. We're going to first this thing out. He's probably going to go... Well, he's probably going to expect the Fire-type attack, so we're going to go for the Thunderbolt. Still going for the... He's definitely not Scarfed. He's probably Specs. So we're going to just keep Thunderbolting. And is he's pretty much letting Typhlosion die at this point. Which he really shouldn't be. He might go into Archaeops. Which would be a bad idea. Yeah. Unless he's a Scarf Archaeops. This is a bad idea. It's a Scarf Archaeops. I do not know why he has a Scarf Archaeops. Alright, so now we're pretty much free to just psychic things because that's a Scarf Archaeops. It's hard to just note how weird a Scarf Archaeops is. Okay, so we got Poison. I don't know if he's Quick Feet or if he's Guts. He's probably... Okay, well, he's not Quick Feet because he didn't outspeed us. He should probably be using Flame Orb, though, if he's Guts. Since Guts cuts the, ignores the special attack drop, he's going to probably go for the Stone Edge or the Head Smash. Head Smash is going to be pretty bad, so he's going to forfeit. Did you forfeit yet? Okay, so both forfeits. And we're going to do one more match. We haven't been getting many decent matches this episode, but... Whatever, this has been long enough. I think it's been going on for almost 40 minutes. So we're going we're gonna to end it at this episode and I'm going to have some more of my water. Very important if you guys wanted to uh, do your own channels. Water helps a lot when you're doing this long episodes. So let's see what we've got here. Got an Excelgore, which is probably a lead. We're going to lead off with Crusselin. Although, you know what, so, just so I don't forget, we're going to change Crosslin. We're going to give him the safety goggles. That way, if we're against the lead Vivalon, we'll be immune to... Oh, Hariyama. We're going to just go straight for the Stealth Rocks. Okay, that's not going to do much. I'm going to go for Spikes. He's going to go for the knockoff. 
We're gonna go for the spikes. Okay, so aside from knockoff, we're pretty safe to go into. We're gonna go into Arbok, intimidate him, then we're gonna switch into Zatu, expecting another earthquake. Now we're gonna go for the psychic. This way we can sponge a knockoff easier. Because he is assault vested. See? And now we can f a little bit more freely spam psychic. Because we don't have to worry about life orb recoil anymore. <laughs> is that Pelipper, which I'm pretty sure is physically defensive. I. I could always be wrong. So we'll go for another psychic. He's gonna lose some special defense. We're gonna keep spamming psychic because we don't have to worry about life orb recoil. He's going to have to attack us. Or switch it to Reggie Rock apparently. So we're gonna hit him with a psychic. We're gonna go for the Giga Drain. He's gonna land the Stone Edge. We're gonna go back into our rock. We're gonna Earthquake it. He's probably going to switch into Excelgore? Does that thing have Regenerator? Oh no, he was just at that health. Whoops, I'm silly. We're going to go for a Coil. We're faster than the Pelipper, unless it just used Whirlwind. Okay, so we went for the Roost to get some health back. We're going to go for the Gunk Shot. We're going to lose our Hazard, which is bad, but we just got a free boost on our Arbok, so I'm happy about that. Tangela can't really switch in, Excelgore doesn't really want to. His only decent switches are probably, yeah, the Gator or Excelgore. So we went for the Swords Dance. We're going to go for the Sucker Punch. We're going to knock that thing out. I'm not sure. Oh, he's going to forfeit. All right. Well, that's enough for one episode, guys. I noticed you seem to like the last episode where we did a team building guide instead of our usual let's play. This is kind of, I guess, a mixture of let's play plus team building, so I'm half helping you guys and half just playing a game. So, you know what? This is what I know. I like to consider myself pretty decent at the team building process. I'm fairly unlucky when it comes to actually battling, but hopefully you guys enjoy this. Be sure to rate, subscribe, leave a comment, tell your friends, and have a nice day. See ya!